Hi everyone, this is Nick, and I'm gonna hope that you've got a Gaja Velasca on the counter in front of you. Now, I'm going to be covering the initial setup for these machines. Now, that includes tips and tricks on how to streamline this process, and a look at the included accessories that come in the box with your machine. We'll cover things like getting your water filter activated, and how to navigate different steps in the menu so that you can optimize things like standby time, screen contrast, and maybe some of the more boring stuff so that we can really sink our teeth into more fun things later on. But you need to do your due diligence. Let's get into it and take a look at how to set up these machines. All right, so included with the Velasca is a suite of accessories that can be used to help operate and maintain the machine. Now, first is the Mavia Intenza water filter. And I say first because I think it is of primary importance that we take care of our water quality. One of the most common causes of machine uh, issues can be scale buildup caused by lime scale. Something like the Intenza filter is not only going to keep your water tasting fresh by removing impurities like chlorines, but it also will help soften the water so that you won't be descaling as frequently. And I've got one off camera here, but this is what one looks like. We'll cover installing that in just a sec. Continuing on down the line, we have our cleaning brush. So this is basically a small detail brush that's used to brush off ground coffee and other bits that can adhere to the brew unit. So when you open up your machine and rinse that out, you can also use that brush to wipe that down. Now, next to that is a tube of the Brew Group lubricant. So this is a food safe grease that is used to lubricate the mechanisms inside the brew unit. That's where your coffee is brewed, and there are some parts of that that slide along tracks. This basically keeps things sliding nicely and prevents any of that plastic from grinding if it dries out. Now, next to that, we've got actually kind of a dual act here between our scoop and adjustment socket. So this is used both to dose coffee for the pre-ground bypass doser and also to adjust the grind adjustment post inside the grinder. So there's a small socket on the end of this and you will need this to make adjustments to your grind. So don't lose this scoop. It's a pretty important scoop. Um, but, you know, lastly, we have an accessory that's actually unique to the Velasca Prestige. This is the hot water spout. So basically, if you ever want to dispense hot water or say you are removing that one touch carafe so that you can store it in the fridge, this spout fits right into that socket. It can preserve the aesthetics of your machine and is used for dispensing hot water. And with that, those are the accessories that come with your machines. All right, so this is not a brand new Velasca, but I'm going to emulate the steps that you'll need to follow to get your machine set up out of the box. Now, one of the most important things to do is to remove the reservoir and rinse it. You always want to do this before you use any of this water to brew your espresso. So I'm gonna take care of that right now. Getting a taste of my uh, behind the machine reservoir insertion skills here, but the next thing that we would need to do if this was brand new would be to prime the machine. And now what that means is basically the pump needs to draw in water for the first time. And so you may be prompted to do this if you ever have the machine in storage for a while and the inside of the machine dries out. But basically it will dispense water through this wand here, or if you're using the Velasca Prestige, through the included spout. So that would look a little something like this. And now when you are setting up your machine, it will conclude the prime automatically. So you don't have to worry about how much water to run through the circuit. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at getting our water hardness programmed and our media Intenza filter activated. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of a science experiment to determine our water hardness, both to program the machine and our water filter. Now included with the Velasquez, as you saw, is a water hardness test strip. So there are four squares on this strip that will be green out of the box. And as we test the water, they will change from green to red, uh, orange maybe, depending on uh, you know your point of view which will determine how hard the water is. So we'll start with that. And then my one bit of crucial advice here to you is that you need to make sure that the water that you actually brew with in your machine is the water that you're testing. So if you wind up filtering it or doing anything like that, you should be testing that water. So we'll do a very brief dunk. You only need about one second. We'll pull that out 
shake off any excess water. So it's important to give that about a minute because we want to make sure that the colors have had time to change completely so that we have the correct water hardness. Now we'll then take our Mavia Intenza filter. So there is a layer of sediments in here that basically are used to trap particulate to clean the water. And what we want to do is make sure that that gets nice and hydrated first before we install it into the filter. So we'll simply submerge that into the water and I'm doing my best so that you can see what I'm doing here, but you want to squeeze those bubbles out as best you can. And gosh, it does recommend too that you can shake the filter. This is a uh, somewhat shallow bowl that I'm working with here and I don't feel like making a mess, but we'll give that a good squeeze. And we are more or less good to go there. So you can uh, hopefully have a second towel to uh, shake the excess off of your hand here, but Let's take a look at our strip. Now, I have some good experience with these. I am rushing just a touch here, but the first two squares on this are turning orange, which indicates that we have a water hardness of two. Now, we'll be setting that in the menu, but it's also important that we use that to set the filter itself. So again, trying not to make too much of a mess here, but there are going to be three letters on the base of the filter, A, B, and C, that correspond to the result of your test. So one to two is soft water, which is going to be A. So that's our result, we'll be moving it to A. Three is B, and then if you have four squares, that's C, or you know, basically your water is partly made out of rocks. So we'll go ahead and you simply grasp these two grips on the base and twist it so that the arrow lines up with the letter that you've got here. So now we have set our water filter. We'll go ahead and get it installed in the reservoir and get it activated and our hardness programmed. All right, so now that we've determined our water hardness, let's get our reservoir prepped. So we'll simply remove it from the machine and insert the water filter into the back. After that, we will refill the reservoir with water, reinsert it in the machine, and then we'll go ahead and activate the filter. All right, so with our filter now in the reservoir, we will activate it and we'll also make sure that our water hardness is set correctly. Now, before we do that though, just a very brief overview of the Velasca's navigation. So we have the display, of course, which is in its standard brewing screen with our coffee strength displayed. But on the left side of the screen, we have the espresso, espresso lungo, and aroma strength buttons. So these first two, that's used to brew two of our drinks and aroma strength is used to change the strength setting. We'll get to that in a second, but it's important to note too that the espresso and aroma strength button are dual purpose in that they have other functions when we're in menus. So espresso has the return arrow, which is how we return from a selection we've made, or the aroma strength button with its check is how we would confirm a selection that we've made. Now, on the opposite side of the screen, we have steam, hot water, and the menu button, which we're about to push. Steam and menu are used as up and down arrows for navigating. So we'll go ahead and press that menu button. And we see our first option is coffee temp. Now, as we scroll down, we'll get to our first destination, which is water hardness. Now, if we confirm that, we can now set the water hardness between one and four. Now, as you can see, we're at two, which is actually conveniently what our hardness was. But if it wasn't, you'd simply use those arrows to move about to a new hardness and then confirm your selection. So we've done that and now we're good to continue moving on. Now, the water filter needs to be activated through this section of the menu. So we'll say confirm here and our options are on and off. So we wanna go ahead and switch that to on. Now, that's pretty much all that you need to do in that menu, but the next step is actually going to be to run water through the machine to make sure that the filter is activated properly. So on the standard Velasca, that's going to be dispensing water through the steam wand. And on the Velasca Prestige, we would use the hot water spout to do that. Now, Gaja recommends that you dispense an entire tank's worth of water to make sure that the filter is appropriately activated. So 
The water reservoir is 54 ounces and you may lose a handful of ounces just with the extra volume of the filter, but it's good to have a large container. So unless you're like me and you happen to have a second Velasca reservoir handy, something like a large bowl or a pitcher would work just fine for this. So all you wanna do now is simply press the hot water button and let the machine dispense until there is no water left. And that's it for activating the water filter on either of these machines. So when the machine stops dispensing, you'll simply need to continue dispensing again until all water has been exhausted from the reservoir. Once that's done, refill with clean water and your water filter has been activated. Now, it's important to note that once you have activated the filter, when it has expired its filtration lifespan, you will be alerted on screen to replace it. This is important because the operating logic of the Velasca will reduce the frequency of the machine's decalcifying alert based on whether or not a filter is present. So you want to make sure that you are keeping up with replacing your filters and that you have accurately programmed your water hardness. So if you ever move, for example, and you've got new water at the tap, you want to make sure that you have programmed that hardness to account for any changes. Otherwise, we're good to move on to our final step which is getting our grinder set up, and then we can start brewing. All right, so actually before the grinder, we are going to have our little surprise segment here, which is the rest of the options in our menu that we just saw. So going back in, we do have coffee temp. Now, coffee temp is available between min, med, and max. So we recommend if you like the hottest coffees that this machine can produce, simply leave it to max. And when we get into brewing, I can go over a couple of other tricks to help you optimize that temperature. So let's simply confirm that though. Now, moving on though, we have standby. And so standby is how long is my Velasca going to wait before it powers down into an energy save mode? So that's between 15 minutes to three hours or you know 180 minutes. This will cause the machine to rinse when it's powering back on. So if you want to preserve some water as well, you can leave the standby to a higher time. So we'll confirm that. Moving on from standby mode, we can skip past water hardness to get into display contrast. And so basically, if you're having a hard time seeing the icons on the display, you can adjust the contrast. So that's simply to adjust to your preference I like it nice and contrasty, so we're gonna max that out. Scrolling down is our water filter. Start calc clean is the decalcification process. So that uses Gaja's official decalcifying solution, which is a certified uh, acidic cleaner, basically, that breaks down scale buildup on the inside of your espresso machine. Now, you don't wanna use any like down home wisdom and use things like vinegars for instance because they can cause damage to your machine so this guy right here not only does it have a really nice red and white gaja you know bit of uh, motif on there but it's actually certified safe to use for cleaning your machine so when you see this come up you are going to need to use your decalcifier and this whole decalcifying process is going to be determined by how hard your water is. So the presence of the water filter and properly setting your water will determine how frequently that needs to be done. Now, scrolling down to the bottom, we have our factory reset, which simply restores the defaults on the machine, which is good if, say, for instance, you know, somebody has messed up some of your settings and you don't want to go to the trouble of resetting everything individually, you can go right on ahead and factory reset. And otherwise, that more or less covers the entire menu here for the Velasca. So those are the settings that you can set, get them to where you want them to be, and then you can move on to setting your grinder and ultimately getting your drinks set up to brew. Before moving on to the grinder, let's take a look at some of the differences in the Velasca Prestige's navigation versus the standard Velasca. Now, while the machines have the same bodywork and frame, you'll notice that the main display actually is somewhat different, with the Velasca Prestige hosting a suite of eight buttons as opposed to six. That's due to the inclusion of additional options offered by the OneTouch Carafe. We now have a carafe quick clean button, which is used to initiate a quick clean of the carafe 
to rinse the spouts before putting it back in the refrigerator. Now, the other button, that's the special drinks. So, in addition to the four drinks that we have across the screen, the espresso, espresso lungo, cappuccino, and milk froth, we also have the special drinks button. Now, this gives us the options to produce hot water and then also the baby cappuccino. Now, if you haven't heard of a baby cappuccino, this is probably the first time I had heard of one too. It's a small drink, it can't be programmed, and it's basically a little hit of espresso and some frothed milk. Maybe something similar to say like a espresso macchiato. This would be a nice after dinner drink when you've got a dessert and want something kind of decadent but maybe with a little bit less coffee and just a nice hit of foam. But the baby cappuccino, it's a fun little drink there. But we want to take a look at the menu. So as we scroll down after coffee temperature, you can see the star of the show as far as the Velasca's coffee brewing programming is concerned. That's pre-infusion. So if you're not familiar with what pre-infusion is, it's the initial pre-soaking of coffee grounds before the extraction. And on the Velasca Prestige, we have the ability to set that to one of three different settings. So if you did off, basically what would happen is you would grind and then simply just extract water through the coffee and brew your espresso. But when you turn pre-infusion on or turn it to extra, that includes a delay with an initial hit of water. So basically you're going to let that puck get introduced gently to some water, the grounds swell, and that helps with extra rich extractions because you've basically woken up that coffee before hitting it with pressure. Now, this is a setting that you are going to use to affect all of the drinks, but I would highly recommend that you experiment brewing, say, a pre-infused shot on extra versus having the pre-infusion turned simply off so you can see the you know, scope of the difference really when brewing like this. So I'll leave that on, of course, because that's my preferred method for brewing. The only other big difference that we're going to see here in this menu is the full carafe clean. So the quick clean is an option basically just to rinse those spouts. A full carafe clean would be used in conjunction with a specially formulated milk cleaner so that you can break down the milk fats or solids that may have built up in the carafe over time to really give that a deep and thorough clean. And so that option is available in the menu if you ever need to get to that. If we scroll down through, you'll see again, there is the water filter, which we had taken a look at, a decalcification start, and then the factory reset. Other than that, the machines are identical, but it's definitely worth noting that there is a difference just in terms of the total navigation. Just as a final reminder, of course, you'll see that the espresso and aroma strength buttons are still the return and confirmation keys, and the cappuccino and special drink buttons are your up and down arrows for navigating menus. All right, so here we are at the top of the Velasca taking a look at the bean hopper. Now, by removing this lid, we'll be able to get our grind set, and we'll also take a look at the bypass doser. So let's take that off and just take a look at the inside of our bean hopper here. Now, you have an auger at the base, which is what pulls your coffee into the grinder. And now, to set the grinder, we'll use our grind adjustment key here, which fits right on top of this post. So you do see there is a little 10 right here, and then it just gets finer in terms of the size of these tick marks. Now, by inserting the socket over this post here, to adjust the grind, you want to push and then turn, right? Sort of like if you're opening a bottle of vitamins. And now, if you're ever confused, on the top of the scoop as well, you have a minus and plus icon so that you can tell if you're adjusting more coarse or more fine. We personally recommend that when you're setting this up, try it on the finest setting. A lot of times people might say, hey, you know, I really want a strong espresso. I need to use dark roasted coffee for this. Couldn't be further from the truth with the espresso process that we've got here, which brews under pressure and using a fine grind, you can get really rich extractions with a more traditional medium roast Italian coffee. And so that is my warning to you too, to avoid using oily coffees or beans. They can gum up this whole hopper, this mechanism, the brew unit. You really want something that doesn't have a lot of surface sheen or oils. Now, while we're up here too, we can take a look at the bypass doser. So that's where you use the other half of this scoop. The bypass doser is used to load the 
brew group actually with pre-ground coffee. So you'd fill this scoop up, level it off and dump it in. I'll be brewing a shot with that later so you can see more of what that looks like. But the bypass doser is great because you don't want to change out your whole hopper full of beans. So if you have a guest, for instance, who likes something like decaf, you can load pre-ground decaf into the bypass doser and keep your caffeinated beans in the hopper. It's important to make sure that you adjust your grind setting before you put the beans in because first of all, you can make a free adjustment with the grinder if there's no coffee in it. If you have beans inside the grinder, you can only adjust one step at a time. The other thing too is it's just easier to see everything, to find the post, and just to kind of get a feel for what the hopper setup looks like before putting beans in it and then never looking at it again. So that's the hopper. Let's go ahead and put some beans in here. And we'll be ready to brew. 